if you are with someone just gratify the person and most people when they are gratified they reciprocate if you make them happy they'll do something to make you happy but is that love to give the fat child even more sweets and then there is self elevation which is never an easy thing when you make someone happy he feels obliged to return the happiness whereas when you want to elevate someone it causes some pain some stretch some distress chances are that the fellow will not only be not grateful to you he might even become actively passively hostile to you now that's such a bad bargain no normally first of all you are investing effort in elevating a person and what is it that you are getting in return hostility this is the attitude that we hold towards others obviously this is also the attitude we hold towards ourselves when it comes to our life we find it easy to indulge in self gratification rather than self elevation self gratification only fattens the self and when you tell a fat person you are fat go run around a little again the probability is that the person will not take it happily or kindly you may receive hostility in return the fellow may, might say you don't want me to relax you don't want to see me happy and if you are pointing at my fat belly i'll point at some shortcoming in your personality and who wants to happily hear shortcomings in his own being so you strike a happy deal you say i'll keep you happy you keep me happy i'll scratch your back you scratch my back that's the relationship we have with ourselves as well and that is quite prakritic we don't want to take the tougher option we don't want to take the less frequented road are you getting it pleasing oneself is not at all an example of self love if at all it is an example of lack of self knowledge you cannot have self love without self knowledge it is a great misconception must be cleared very very thoroughly very very finally making yourself happy is not at all an example of loving yourself love does not bother for happiness love bothers for rightness for elevation self gratification fattens the self self elevation dissolves the self now obviously if you are a fat man getting a little fatter doesn't quite hurt you immediately or does it if you already 105 kg it's all right to binge a little more a turn 106.5 by the end of the dinner doesn't quite hurt right you are already 105 but if someone comes to you and says you ought to be 75 you want that person to drop dead in front of your eyes what did he just say he wants me to lose 30 kg he wants me to dissolve he wants me to reduce 
Oh my God, isn't life about gaining more and more? Now when it comes to the body, you find it obvious that sometimes it is important to reduce, right? But when it comes to the ego, we just don't appreciate that it is mostly important to reduce. All we want is accumulation and further accumulation. Self-love is an exercise in reduction, not further accumulation. Therefore, be it love towards somebody else or love towards oneself, real love is always tough. False love is very lucrative, very charming. Oh, there is such a romance around it. But then that romance is hardly love. Real love tests. Real love stretches, breaks. Real love is like a sculptor carving a beautiful one out of an unseemly rock. The rock must go through, suffer a lot of hits of the sculptor's tools without suffering at the hands of the sculptor no rock can ever turn into a beautiful piece of art that's love huh? when you help someone else's life take a beautiful shape then you are loving the other when you help your own life turn beautiful, then you are loving yourself. Are you getting it? Hmm? One has to very clearly appreciate the difference between pleasure and welfare. That which pleases you is not necessarily in your welfare, mostly, if not always, that which pleases you, fattens you, spoils you, degrades you. Be very cautious of pleasure. Hmm? And the elder brother of pleasure called happiness. Pleasure is when you are receiving very physical, very carnal gratification. Animals experience pleasure. Give tasty food, what the animal experiences is pleasure. Give an opportunity to mate, what an animal experiences is pleasure. A little higher than pleasure is happiness. When your aims are achieved when something happens as per your desired image then what you experience is happiness happiness is more definable happiness lasts a bit longer than pleasure but neither the pursuit of pleasure nor the chase of happiness can be called as self-love. Why? Because your contentment cannot come through pleasure or happiness. And love is about giving yourself the highest. When you love somebody, do you want to stop short of giving them the highest possible? Similarly, when you love yourself, would you stop short of giving yourself the highest possible? 
the highest possible is not contained in pleasure nor in happiness. Both pleasure and happiness leave you craving for more. And you know that, have you not? We all have experienced pleasure. We all have experienced happiness as well. Have they ever been sufficient and final? Never. Therefore, if you really love yourself, then it is not pleasure or happiness or gratification that you would want to provide yourself. You would want to give yourself something that lasts, something that is trustworthy, something you can pose your faith on. Getting it? Something that is really an act of intelligence. Is it intelligent to invest yourself in something that would come to you, be with you for half an hour and then evaporate? Doesn't sound quite intelligent. Therefore, self-love is an exercise in intelligence. You have to ask. What is it that I really want? What is it that would provide me a deep and very long lasting contentment? What is it that would elevate me from the level of desires for the futile? That is what I would want to gift myself and that is called self-love. Gifting oneself the highest possible.